your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, what was that? Just a noise. Oh, I thought it was a noise. What did it sound like? It sounded like a pop. David, you're positive, you're a mind reader, you're a clairvoyant. You're wonderful. Very wonderful, very wonderful. I have to meet a contractor on a job. Already? Now, don't tell me. That isn't what I heard, Pop. Because if Pop overs Pop so you can hear it, Pop, it isn't a good Pop over. It wasn't the Pop over <laughs> you heard, Pop. It was what goes with the Pop over the Pop. I just opened the syrup bottle. This all sounds like Peter Piper picked a peckle, pickle. I get the idea, anyway. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't see the connect. You do like pickles. Darling, the list of what I don't like for breakfast would fill a book. The list of what I do like is very simple. Why are you so insistent on ganging up on How me? can one person gang up on anybody? I don't know, but you manage to. Fortunately for me, I not only don't have time to eat them, but I haven't got time to argue about them. That one tiny one? Well... Just this warm since there's no toast. Mmm. Hey, not bad. There, see? Mmm. Not for breakfast. Now, look, darling, I don't know when I'll be home. I wish I could help you with the bookcase. Oh, but... I'll manage it all right. Just sell it again. The man at the auction told me they often do. I'd feel safer if you prom- promised to stay away from the auction. You're the kind of woman who is a sucker for white elephants. They have a beautiful white ivory elephant on exhibition for the next I mail. didn't mean that kind. But you've got to admit the secretary was a wonderful value. Wonderful value to somebody who's got a ten-foot ceiling. But a white elephant to us, it's comparative. The ivory elephant was small. It was still an elephant. Do you or do you not promise? I promise. Finish your orange juice. Have another pop over? If you so much as mention them, I will pop you. <laughs> and now I will pop over or pop under this bookcase that is blocking the door. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Pop, pop. <laughs> that was a poor excuse for a kiss. And now I'll pop along on my popping way. Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> oh, there. Uh, say, mister, the way you popped out of that door, you almost run me over. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Norton. Meant to take the bookcase back. Uh, Claudia, there's a man to see you about an elephant. Oh, hello, Fritz. Good morning, Mrs. Norton. Uh, the truck meant to take back the piece of furniture. Oh. I got there as soon as I could, lady. We got a lot of deliveries. Do you still want the bookcase to go back to the auction? I was hoping to get back in time for this afternoon's sale. Well, if that's where you want it, it'll be there in half an hour, lady. All right, Hyman. We stub up. My name is still Fritz. Look. Just so long as you carry your half of it, I'll call you a sweetheart. Huh? Say, this didn't get no lighter since last night. You'll be careful of the wall. Uh, sure thing. Uh, hey, lady, you better sit down on the sofa. Don't you feel good? I... No, I don't. I, I mean, I... Hey, Raymond, watch it. The little lady just passed out. Put down your ankle. All right. Hey, get some water. Be in her face. Say, do something. I am doing something. I'm not getting excited. She ain't dead, is she? Things that happened to a guy. No, it is just that she fainted. Will not last long. It was nothing that I did. No, I'm quite sure that it was nothing that you did. Oh, that's a pretty kettle of fish. I don't like being here with a dame passed out on a sofa. Mrs. Norton is not a dame, like you say, and she did not pass out. She fainted. All skates is dame. You think I don't know how to speak English? Why do you think she passed out? Uh, could be a reason. Hey, uh, there's somebody at the door. I can squeeze by. Why, Claudia, what's happened? Uh, now, there's nothing to get alarmed that lady. She just turned pale and keeled over. She is all right, Mrs. Brown. Uh, she's opening her eyes now. 
Yes, she is. All right. Uh, Hyman, let's get out of this. Too much people are faint you in here. Mama, you here? What happened? I... I'm glad you're here. Uh, you need I should help you. Uh, send up Bertha, maybe? No, I think everything will be all right. I'll call Bertha if I need her. All right. Uh, the truckman, uh, take the front end. Right, you are, Hyman. <laughs> My old lady used to get This is a nice how do you do. What happened? I, I don't know. I... The only thing I can remember is that I got a little dizzy all at once. You apparently got a great deal dizzy. You fainted. Fainted? Me? You mean I was unconscious? You don't have to be so proud about it. It happens in the best of families. But I never fainted in my life. I'm not the kind of person that faints. There are not kinds of people who faint. There are two only girls in old-fashioned novels. Apparently, new-fashioned girls can do it, too. You don't seem very worried about it. Well, I'm not. That isn't true. You're as white as a ghost. You really are worried. Now, you admit it. For someone who isn't the kind of girl who faints, you're as proud as if you'd really done something. Let me see your tongue. Let me see your tongue. Let me see your tongue. From the time I was a baby, if I had so much as a sniffle, it was... Let me see your tongue. Won't you ever realize I've grown up? As far as your tongue is concerned, I haven't noticed it. Stick it out. How did I tongue? Wags quite a lot. <laughs> Otherwise, all right. What did you have for breakfast? Oh, just the usual. Except I had popovers for David. Well, they'd been known to be indigestible. David thought they were pretty rich. He liked them, he said, but he wouldn't eat more than one. Oh, well, there you are. And I suppose you ate up all that were left. I didn't eat any. I didn't know it, but I guess I wasn't feeling any too well then. For you not to eat is a serious symptom. What did you eat yesterday? Uh, nothing. Well, that is, of course, a gross exaggeration. Now, think back. What did you eat for lunch yesterday? I wasn't hungry. All I felt like was a piece of bread and butter and a pickle. Oh, do you think it could have been the pickle? No. I do not think it was anything you ate. Open your mouth again. Let me look at your throat. You make me feel like a sick horse. You know, I have been feeling sort of not so good for the past week. Well, why didn't you say something about it? It always passes off. But my throat feels fine. Hush up. Let me look. Open. Now say ah. Ah. Throat's all right. Forehead's cool. No fever. Could it be a bad heart, maybe, like Aunt Louisa's? It is not a bad heart like Aunt Louisa's. And anyway, Aunt Louisa hasn't got a bad heart. She has asthma. This doesn't feel like asthma. Well, it definitely is not asthma. You don't seem at all worried. In fact, you look positively pleased because your daughter fainted. I am. Come on, now. I'll help you get dressed. It's much too early to go to the auction. We are not going to the auction. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to the doctor's. I like doctor's offices. Why? Oh, they're so educational. I mean, about all the geography I ever learned was at the doctor's office, out of the National Geographic. You couldn't know less geography. You are practically illiterate. Geographically speaking. That's because I was always so healthy. Do you suppose we'll have to wait long for Dr. Williams? If we'd had an appointment, we wouldn't have had to wait at all. But I mean, we'd have been on time. You mean we'd have done our waiting somewhere else? I'm so nervous. Feel my hands are cold. Oh, there's nothing to be at all nervous yes, about. There is. Suppose it isn't true. Well, supposing. I couldn't bear it. I'd be so disappointed. So would David. Well, since David doesn't know anything about it, how could he be disappointed? Calm down. Read your magazine. Like you, I suppose. I'm calm, and I'm reading. Mm, upside down. I was looking at the pictures. Mm, upside down. Shh. Here's Dr. Williams. Take two of those pills after each meal. Come in again next week this time for a checkup. Hello, Dr. Williams. Well, 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 Mrs. Brown, and... You, young lady. Good afternoon, Doctor. You come into my office. Well, you're both looking very well. Who's the patient? I am. I'm going to have a baby. Isn't it wonderful? Claudia. Well, that's very good news. Uh, who told you? Mama. Claudia, will you behave? Doctor, there mightn't be any truth in this at all. Well, if there isn't, I'm awfully sick because I fainted this morning. So, 
Well, fainting spells can come from a number of things. I, I shouldn't jump to conclusions too hastily. Uh, sit down here and let me take your blood pressure. Roll up your sleeve. Is that far enough? Yeah, I'll just wrap this around your arm. Hold still. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There uh, we are. What was it? 120. Is that good? Excellent. Couldn't be better. Let me listen to your heart. Oh, my heart's all right. My heart's fine. Claudia, will you behave? The last time I treated this child, she had the measles. She hasn't changed very much, has she? A little for the worse, if anything. <laughs> I don't see how her husband puts up with her. I'd like to meet that young man of yours someday. Is he happy about the baby? He doesn't know about it yet. It just happened. He thinks Mama and I are at an auction sale. But he's wonderful and he'll love it. Claudia, please talk sense. I can't. I'm too excited. <laughs> David really is wonderful, Dr. Williams. Yes, he's pretty nice, Doctor. Well, you three seem to be mighty good friends. It'll be even nicer when there are five of us. Five of us? Yes. After the twins come. After the twins... You'd better begin with one at a time, young lady. Twins run in families. If anyone should happen to ask you. Nonsense. With my dual personality and David's charm, how can we miss? You'd be surprised. Now then, let me write down a few facts. You're, uh, how old? Nineteen. Eighteen. Mama, must we go into that again? My birthday is December 29th. All right. Nineteen. And, Doctor, if you don't think it's confusing to be born so close to January 1st... Oh, it must be. It's a jip, too. Gets all mixed up with Christmas and raises hob with presents and parties. I think the Doctor is interested in other details. There's but... something I won't be as thoughtless about as you. I'll never do anything like that to a child of mine. Well, apparently not to this child. Let's call you 19. Well, uh, practically 19. You know, Mama, with a little cheating at both ends, I can be a grandmother at 40. I see I have my life's work cut out for me. And so apparently has David, earning enough money to support them. And you've been married how long? Just three months. That's pretty good, isn't it? I don't know just what you mean by pretty good, but pretty good. Can you tell if it'll be twins? Yes. When? After the first one is born. Oh, I can't stand the suspense. But if it is true, you ought to expect this baby around, oh, middle of June. Do you mean to say I have to wait that long? I certainly hope that you see your way clear to do so. There's something wrong with the system. It's been tested out for a number of years now, and personally, I found it very satisfactory. Now, step into my other office. Come with us, Mama. Why, Mrs. Brown, your hands are freezing. But what do you expect? This is my first grandchild. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. One hears a great many suggestions these days about how to entertain young people in the home. One excellent way is to keep the refrigerator well stocked with Coca-Cola. That ensures many a refreshing pause during study and play hours. Better still, it provides the makings of a party any old time, the sort of friendly, wholesome home party parents approve of. How is your supply of Coke? Hadn't you better stock up? Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. (laughs) 